Morning all, back on the job and we are fitting a few floating shelves, not our usual style. We're fitting floating shelves on battens. We usually use pins where they slide on, but we are matching the existing. We'll show you in a minute. On one side, we've got floating shelves already there. We're going to match it on the left. The room is a little bit unfinished. We've got no floor, etc., etc. So what we're going to do is um, we're just going to laser level those lines across and just make our way across. doesn't matter about the floor. We'll make it happen. Um, we've got our tools out, I'll spin the camera around and I'll show you what we've got this morning. So as you can see we're back to the same job where, I'm not sure if you remembered, we built the bin storage, done a little bit of a twist, oh no it hasn't, there we go, just didn't sit down properly. So that's great, they've got their succulents in there, it's looking really really nice and he still needs to treat it, I need to remind him about that, but we've got all our gear out everything that we need. We've got 12 mil moisture resistant for the boarding and we've got some battens up on the roof. We're using 18 by 38. We bought some OSB to stand on, but I don't think we're going to need them. Pin gun, glue, um, bench, choppy set up, plungy. Let's walk through. So no floor. But it's cool. It's not the end of the world. So Sean's rigging up the laser level. He's going to laser level those lines across where to start. And we have got our tool meter. Found that this is great. I've gone through so many of these, but if you want to see this model, this is fantastic. It got us out of trouble on our last job because there's so many cables running through the walls. So we're going to just find out where our cables are. We're going to batten the walls out and then we're going to clad with 12 mil. So Stay tuned because, yeah, it's um, not a five minute job, um, but step number one, level those across and then we can just start battening out for the framework. Am I right, Sean? Yeah. How are you doing today anyway? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looking a bit stubbly today, mate. No shaving. Homeless man look, hey? <laughs> okay, so laser level set up. He's got it to the bottom of the shelf, ping that across and there we go. We've got our line of the bottom. But we are cladding with 6mm now, not 12 We've got to go back and get some 6 because it got 6, 6 and a 38mm batten equals 50. Um, if we use 12 as we got, it'll be 62. So we just need to come up 6 to start on our framework. John's going to be cutting all the battens to suit mile. Um, I'm going to get the 6mm. Yeah, you happy with that? Yeah. Right, all marked anyway. You can see all our lines are on and all squared around using the laser as a, again. So. Happy day, Sean. You can crack on and cut those battens if you like. Yeah. Where we got the back battens on, Sean pre-drilled five holes with a three mil drill bit on all of these. Um, well, two on the sides, five on the back. So he's pre-drilled them outside on the bench, brought them in, put that three mil drill bit back through the batten to mark the wall, removed it. Then we are using a six mil drill bit because we are putting these corkscrews in, plasterboard fixings, all the walls are, walls are plasterboard. So, but we need to pre-drill for the body of that. So forget the thread, the body of that um, corkscrew is about six mil. In example, this one has been marked with a batten. Then we're gonna go ahead and pre-drill with that with a six. Then the corkscrew will then go in flush with the wall. I'll show you that in a moment. Then we're good to go just to pump in a, norm, a normal 50 mil wood screw through the timber into the corkscrew. That's why they're designed like that. They're pretty decent these, get the metal ones. I'll leave a link. So now that is ready, do you want to put these in for me? Yeah. That one again. Oh, you had an unlucky one there, mate. <laughs> oh well, it's getting covered, but maybe there's um, something behind. We're using 50mm normal wood screws, okay? 20mm through the batten and about 30mm into the actual corkscrew because they're 30mm long. And um, yeah, we're going to carry on and do that and we'll show you what they look like in a moment. Now we have all of our frames in position. We need to get those little noggin type battens in. I'll show you what I mean by that. These are the existing shelves. You see we need to put a couple of battens across to give it more structure, more strength. So we're going for two. We're dividing the space roughly into three. 
Uh, so two buttons, one, two, gives you three spaces. So Sean's just marked the distance on one and he's just leveling down those lines a bit quicker rather than marking it individually. And then what we will do is make sure that button is straight. I'll show you in a second. So now what we are doing, because that back wall is out of level, it, this might be, for example, 250, that might be 254. We're putting a straight edge on this button because this button, who knows how straight it is squeezing it tight making sure it's straight and then because we've got these pencil lines on there now sean can now take a measurement from back wall to the start of his baton which is 260 something yeah and that's all we're going to do mark them all up top right top left the down right for down left etc etc and then we'll cut them all up and um, get them fixed got our measurements let's go and cut I think sean's dossing again he's drinking that's all he ever does he ever does his doss Choppy set up out here. We've got the trend choppy. Cordless, it's so handy this, this thing, along with these Keta benches. This is our little system. So we've got the T32, uh, well, 35. Um, and this, the great combo. Um, perfect for this kind of job. Battens, small work, beads, you know, that kind of stuff. Really lightweight, portable. Batteries do our side lights also. And the hose is great, it's five meters, really powerful. So yeah, what I like about this, it's got a little vibrator. So um, as you finish hoovering, it'll do this. Because it's got a filter in there and that, what that does, it just vibrates all the dust off of your filter and extends the life of your hoover and just makes it suck better for longer. Really, really powerful. Just plug that in, it's auto start and stop. Can't go wrong, fantastic hoover. And choppy combo, we like it, don't we? Keta benches are also a little lifesaver. This is what we cut all our trims on. Trend stuff there, trend, trend, trend. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those little noggin battens now. Really simple, really simple. Just mark it on, write down what it is so it's easy just to put it back into position. Sean will probably just cut one for me now and I can go and fit it while he's cutting the rest. So Sean said it's the third or the top one on the right. So we've got our lines here. As you can see, we've got our center line yeah, like so. So I pre-drilled with a three mil and then I just put in a 450 once again. What I can do is just hold my baton there and just pre-drill diagonally. Start it there, get it going and then twist my drill bit and then pump it through. Um, that's called pitch screwing. So I think I'm going to do that rather than um, using a bracket. So there we go, the baton has been pre-drilled at the back and I put the screw halfway in. So what I can do, if I want to go the extra mile, I can get a tape measure and measure from that point 383 and then I can just make sure it's 383, put a pencil mark there, just to make sure it's not twisted, you know. Um, it's not really going to make much of a difference, but yeah, go the extra mile, it's worth it. Ta-da, one done, seven more to go. Framework all done, happy. And it's gone really, really well. And we are at 11 o'clock. So we've been on it for about two hours, two and a bit hours. So do you remember when we put a level on the front to get the length of those battens? I'll show you why, because this one was 266, 265, 264, 267, three more variation. And if we didn't do that, then when we came to put a level on the front, they just would not be completely flat. So that is the reason behind um, putting the level on, holding it up against that front baton and taking your measurements because that back wall was out by miles in some places. And then it would cause problems. So when you cut your panels, as we're doing now, some bits would be flush, some bits would be sticking out and then the cap wouldn't work. Like over here, you can see what we're gonna do we put the top and the bottom we're just going to continue this and then the cap goes on the front not my ideal way of making floating shelves because i don't really like that to be honest and it's a nightmare that joint probably always show through no matter how many times you paint it and fill it it'll always show through but we're just copying those like for like but we are scribing these now i'll show you how we're going to scribe these shelves in
Okay, a little way that we do our scribing, there's loads of ways, but if you want a shortcut method, what we do is we cut the shelf maybe 10 mil bigger than the longest part of your opening. Okay, so if you had a meter, do a meter and 10 mil. As you can see here, we've got the shelf in at a diagonal. And then what we do is we put it so it's laying down flat on one end, not angled, not angled like that, flat. And we just obviously it's a little bit floppy this one, so it can vary. We just make sure that it's level, and then that will show us the difference between front and back on one. We then take our measurement of that gap, say that is three mil there. So we cut three mil to nothing, scribe that, and then we can just take a tape measure and measure from this point to the wall, and then from this point to the wall, and mark that from the bit that we just cut onto the other end, scribe that, and that is the width done. Once it's dropped in, we can then do the back scribe, which is pretty easy, a lot easier. So that's what we're going to do, isn't it, Sean? Yeah. Um, lots of other methods you can use, but this is quick and easy. So remember, make sure that your shelf is in. If it wasn't floppy, it's a little bit easier. Um, but then, yeah, just make sure it's at the right level. You can get the level on it, as in level that way. Then that will give you that will give you a clue into the gap difference or how out this is. But make the shelf about we do about ten mil longer, don't we, to get that shelf in at, in at an angle, and then make sure you've got enough. Don't cut off too much, otherwise you won't have enough for the other end. Then you take then you take your measurement from front tip to the other end, back tip to the other end. Once you've done that cut, remember, happy days. Was that good, Sean? Very good. Am I a good teacher? Yeah. Well, Would you give me out twelve? 12 or 11.6. So I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right, everyone, Sean, what do the guys and girls need to do at home? Do they need to become members yes. to show their support to the London Craftsman? Yes, I think. If you're taking anything away from this, I think you should go to the membership page and show your support. Yes. Right, we're going to cut that, do what I said, we'll come back and I'll show you what it's like and then we'll do that back scribe. So let's go back out and I'll show you how we're going to cut them. We're using the plungy, we've got the Makita plungy, C35 hoover down there, like I showed you earlier. We've got this track, okay, that was a 1.4, 1.5 cut in half, just for jobs like this, perfect. I'm going to place that on, make sure we set up the plungy at the right depth so we're not going through. We've got a cutting board at the back, just a piece of MDF offcut. And we are going from 3 mil to nothing. Okay, set up our track, nothing at the back, 3 mil at the front, like so. And we're just going to cut that, and then we can bring it back in and mark our length. Happy days. Couldn't film that one. But there we go, that is our cut done. So that should be the right angle. We can bring that in and just transfer our other line on. And do another cut so in a couple of minutes we should have, have that ready to slip in to do our back scribe so there we go that slipped in and the great thing about it being six millimeter curls into place but it just shows you that that is nice and tight now it's up against the frame and we've got a nice cut it's up against the back wall as well as best as it can be so now i can just take that out and take my measurement from this point to this point so when you do measure and you're trying to get a reading from a curl there you can just mark on the meter mark if you're not confident on reading that measurement mark on the meter mark which is there put a little pencil line then turn your tape measure around and measure from the wall to the pencil line that will give you over give you your overall and then i'll probably take off a mil possibly two start with a mil and that's what i'm going to do front and back just now Right, so that is now scribed in with the technique that I just told you about. Sorry, eating an apple. And all that is left to do is scribe it in the depth. We want this to be flush because we want to put a cap on the front, which is obviously up against the baton because the cap goes over the front of the top and the bottom. So what we have to do is measure from the baton to the front edge in both places. Remember, this is nice and flat, so we only need to do the right and the left. We need to get that parallel. So push it up against the wall until it touches the wall and then pull one side out until it's absolutely parallel. With a bit of luck, you won't need to pull any 
side out. Um, I've got 12 mil there, and I've got 12 mil there, and then all I've got is two six mil packers, and I'm simply going to place my two mil packers in here, draw that in right there, and then I could just, remember this is one-handed, move my packers along like that with my pencil aiming down onto the bottom. Basically, you just need something the same thickness as that overhang, and we're going to just draw that line all the way in, and that will just show us the shape of the wall. We'll cut that with the plungy and the jiggy, most likely the plungy, and it should fit perfectly. Line is all drawn in. We'll take that off and scribe the back with the plungy. A little tip of the day before you do commit and glue and pin that down or fix it in your own method, check it on other faces of other shelves especially the underside of the bit that you've just done. This is the top. Obviously, I've spun it round. Um, I've just dropped it and placed it in, and it does work. Um, I do need to skim that corner ever so slightly to make it flush with the shelf. So I can then take that outside, draw around it, make a mark to tell myself I need to take off two mil in that corner to nothing about there. And then it's a simple and easy cut. There's no more scribing. Um, I'll have that done in about five minutes compared to 20 minutes. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And also just maybe check any others. Sean is on that one. He's going to do the same. And he can check to see if his fits any of these others um, nicely. And it just saves time. And there we go. That is in nice and tight. We've got that flush all the way across. Out there about half a mil. But I'm not going to cry about that. Um, yeah, happy with that. So I've transferred those lines over now to my other piece. So I've got this one to fix into position and I'm going to just simply put a bead of glue around and use my new glue bottles, which um, I love. So just a little bead. Make sure you've dusted it off. Oops. Don't worry about the mess. Look at the floor. I'm going to make any difference. And a little bit there. Sort of squidge out all over the place, so plenty and some on the beams. There we go, happy with that. So now I'm going to place my piece in, and voila, I'll transfer that up and that one up, and I can just get square and transfer those lines. I've got my my trusty silent compressor. Listen to how quiet this is. So quiet. Got my pin gun, got some 30 mil pins set into it. I'll leave links in the description for you guys. But this is a godsend. You need to get yourself one. One of the best tools I have. And make sure you're wearing goggles. If you're unsure about pins, this is about 19, 20 mil wide. So you can just go around with a square and just do a nine mil line all the way around. Um, but if you want to freestyle it, freestyle it. I'm happy to freestyle it because I know the thickness and just pin away. There you go, around the edges. Can you believe it? That square is exactly the right size to fit in. So I'm just going to square across. All right, so. Pin away. There we go, that is one done out of the eight. And um, I've got the other one marked, so I need to cut that, and then that can go underneath. Sean's doing this, he's marked this one out, and he's saying that that is perfect for the underside, so that's two in one. So I've just pinned this one on, Sean's one, because he's doing some more cutting. He's also cut this one for me. Obviously, the glue bolt doesn't work upside down, so square your line across from the baton, and there also, 
drop that down a square on it. I only had three hands. And and now and just put your glue all the way around. Same technique as before, square those lines back, pin it, job done. So that's one shelf done. Um, face wise, the strip left to go. While Sean is cutting the rest of the faces, or the actual shelf faces, I am fitting the strips. So we were meant to use 12 to start with, but we haven't got any six left. Um, so we're using a bit of 12 for the lipping. It's not gonna make any difference. When it gets painted, you won't even know. Fair enough, it's six mil deeper than the shelves over there, but you're not going to notice. Um, so I'm going to use this and pin that on in exactly the same method. Put a ton of glue on the back, which is that one. Just put enough. You want glue on the edge of the MDF faces, as well as the beam or the timber. like so, just so we want to get the glue on the MDF edges. Yeah, I'm going to put this down and um, pin and glue it on the same way. There you go, that's on. So just be sure to get it flush with the most seen face if there are any discrepancies. For example, it's a tiny bit bigger or a tiny bit smaller. Go for the face that's more seen, which in this occasion is this. This one would be this, then that one would be that. That one would be that, okay? So now I can just crack on. This one is completely finished. Got enough glue in there. Once that goes off, it's not going anywhere. I didn't go mad with the pins. It's about seven or eight. I've got some filler. I'm just going to go around with my filler wherever that is. Fill all the edges, fill all the pinholes, and just do that as I go along. Just move from pinning and gluing to filling um, whenever I get chance. Okay, so effectively two, near enough done. Um, let's see if we get that sanded back. Um, we do have paint. There we go. We've got the amicus paint that we will be using, hopefully, um, if the filler dries in time. We've got um, what we use for our wardrobes. Okay, so we've got the white um, primer, which is a 1K primer. Really, really good for MDF. Covered really, really well. Easy to sand back. So hopefully, it's, well, it is really toasty outside. Sean's moaning about how hot it is because it is baking. This will dry in no time. Sand it back with the sander. 240 give it a lick and done so Sean's just cutting his five final four pieces so they should be done in about 10 minutes and we'll get them glued on so coming to the end all the woodworking has been done I have filled everything I've filled all the end grain of all the add-on strips all the pinholes everything is ready to be sanded back now it's had an hour or so for it to for it to dry I've got the orbital sander set up p240 trend hoover on the go adapter set up and um, yeah, I'm just going to give it a blitz. That's the sanding done. And now I need to hoover it back. Oh, I'm sweating. So that's all nice and smooth. Rounded off all the corners, sanded up back all the filler. Let's get out. Dusting brush for the hoover. Okay, so last step is just to put a little bit of primer on just to make it look white and a bit more finished and then job done. I'm using the Vanites brand. Okay, so this is the 1K well worth buying this. Well, I've got myself an old Purdy. I'm gonna move the tin a little bit higher. It's only a little mist coat as such. But this is what I'm gonna do before I hand the job over and then the customer can sand it back and then any other fills that may need to be done, he can do that. All needs to be painted. So there we go guys, all done. We're at about three o'clock, a little bit longer than I planned, mainly because of the filling and the painting and the sanding, the finishing side. The woodwork side was pretty quick, but um, yeah, all the rest was slow. Um, I don't usually get stuck into that kind of stuff, but um, on this occasion I did. And this is the finished job, floating shelves to match the right hand side, 
50 mil thick, same depth, same heights, lined up with the laser. And yeah, they're not going anywhere. Enough to take books, nice and solid. And it doesn't look pretty at the moment, but there was no need to cut in whatsoever because as you can see, it's, um, it's a building site in here. Floor needs to be done, needs decorating, change of color, etc. All the customer really needs to do is rub them down and um, see if there are any other imperfections to fill and then top coats have a day's. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you have, like and subscribe the usual, um, share the video and if you fancy it, become a member, help support the channel. Other than that guys, have a great Friday. I'll see you next Friday. Take it easy. Ciao for now.